welcome back. The Namibian Breweries Limited has seen an expansion of business in the past year. Senior producer Almeri Kapunda sat down with NBL's managing director, Peter Simons, who has been at the helm for over a year. He speaks on the vision for the renowned Namibian company and its plans to help the country in addressing its water scarcity. Heineken has been a shareholder of MBL since 2003. We already had 30% shares at MBL. So it's not an integration of MBL into Heineken. Heineken extended our shareholding from 30% to 60%. So we're the majority shareholder. The big integration was between MBL and Distel Namibia. And my role is to, to, to manage and lead the integration. And that has been done. I mean, so last year we were able to get the competition commission approval. And that's when we started the process to integrate the portfolio. So we went from a beer business only to a beer, cider, wine, spirit business. So a big extension of the portfolio. For that, we had to make quite some let's say adjustments from a warehousing point of view, from a process point of view, from a selling point of view, because the sales guys are not just selling beer, they're selling the total portfolio. Uh, plus we welcomed about 100 people from the style Namibia into MBL. Uh, so we had to also kind of reset and redo a bit of our structure to ensure that we were set up for, for success. Um, and that all went already live in the 1st of July. So by the 1st of July, the kind of people structure was in place. The people were appointed. Um, the biggest challenge we had then is to ensure that the system was enabling that a customer could call one number, order the full portfolio, get that full portfolio on one truck, on one invoice. And that all went live by the 1st of September. And again, that went very smoothly. Uh, uh, so currently we are fully integrated business from a portfolio perspective and from a people perspective. You did mention um, an introduction or like an expansion of products. Yes. You're talking about beer, yes. you're talking about cider yes. and also wine. Yes. Um, as, 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 as trying to grow the Namibian industry, yes. how yes. imperative is it that you become versatile in the products that you're offering to yes. the Namibian nation? Yes. And the growth is, is, is coming from the change of categories, what you, what you can see with young consumers and, and maybe, you know, for, for yourself as well. In the past, because I'm a bit older, right? In the past, you would drink maybe out of one category, one or two brands. If you look at young consumers currently, uh, uh, your, 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 your generation Y and Z, they drink in different categories, different brands. So the opportunity we have because, you know, we took Distel and Amibi on board to be able to offer more categories and really cater for a younger consumer. Uh, uh, um, so in that sense, that's where we can see our growth. It's kind of how do we use the different categories in the best possible way to offer these opportunities. Now, the other one, and I think that is an interesting one, is the innovation. There's, there's so much innovation happening around the world. Uh, and we have a good understanding through research that we have done, a good understanding. What are some of the innovations that are not yet in Namibia, but that could play a really interesting role? Uh, and that is where the other part of the growth will come from, is from innovation. What is interesting enough, not always in the kind of full alcohol category, because what we can see globally, and even in Africa, the kind of low alcohol and no alcohol really starts to play a role. And that's where we can see the growth. You had a meeting with the president yes. of Namibia. Yes. Um, briefly tell us about, because I know it was a closed down meeting. Yes. Tell us about what this meeting was about. Yes. Especially when you look at the economic investments yes. that we plan or that you plan on yes. having in the country. Yes. Uh, now, first and foremost, obviously, we're, we're very privileged to, to have that meeting. Uh, uh, and it, it was very constructive uh, and, 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 and also enjoyable uh, in, in, in that sense. Um, I mean, the idea was firstly, to introduce ourselves because uh, we had a good uh, relation with the late president um, and so it's kind of int introduce ourselves the board and and part of the management team but it was also to give an update where are we you know where is MBL where are we in the integration kind of you know what are we focusing on to ensure that the president has a good understanding of where we are as a business and as well the contribution we make to the economy because because that's quite significant but even more 
you know, how do we drive the sustainability agenda for Namibia and for MBL? And how can we work together there? What are the opportunities that, that we want to leverage? Uh, so that was kind of, you know, the, the conversation that we had. Uh, that was kind of very well received and perceived. And I think the president got a very good understanding that, you know, we are a proudly Namibian business, and we will stay a proudly Namibian business. Even with Heineken having a 60% shareholding, doesn't matter. I mean, we, we are here. We'll stay here, and we're going to grow it in a more sustainable way. And building on all the great work that ONL has done, because I really have to compliment uh, ONL and Sven Thieme and the team on some of the uh, programs that they already started at MBL that, that, that has helped us to build on. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a great... Uh, 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 a transition uh, and, and building on what ONL has done with MBL and we just want to take it to the next level. You briefly just touched on the sustainability aspect. Yes, yes. How important is it? For me personally, it's, it's almost the most important thing you need to do as a managing director. Uh, I, I always say the managing director needs to do a few things. He needs to set the strategy and ensure that he has the right people around him and has the right resources to make that happen. If that is in place, our biggest role is to play the the role as a real solid citizen bringing a sustainable business into the market. Uh, that is the role that, that we need to play. So for me, personally, it's very, very, very important. Um, and there are several as aspects to it. People always talk only around the environmental. What is important? Really, really important. And what we always look at is three things. One is our carbon emission. The second is, you know, around water. And the third one is around waste. These are the kind of three things that we can influence. What has happened already over the years in MBL is that they already made some big investments to uh, uh, tackle some of the challenges. Now, one is to brew beer. And you can see here, uh, I mean, this is a kind of brewing process. I don't want to take you through this. But one thing you need is heat. You need thermal energy. Right. Normally for that you use boilers and normally they are running on, on fuel. What has already been implemented here is a biomass installation that is using biomass. Uh, and biomass is, a, is, is green because it's net zero uh, and it's, 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 it's wood chips uh, that come from uh, uh, trees that are not local trees, they, they're growing far too fast. So we take those trees, they are, they are chopped in, in, in wood chips. It makes ground available again for farmers to farm because these, these trees are growing much too fast. Uh, and we use it as a source for, for our bio boiler uh, to, to create thermal energy. That is already covers almost 80% of the heat that we need. So 80% of thermal is already green. So we still need to close 20% because our aim is to be carbon net zero emission by 2030. So we still need to close uh, uh, 20%. We have a good understanding how we can do that. Uh, 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 so we will get to 100% to zero uh, net zero emission of, of carbon. The second one on that specific element is electricity. So we have made uh, uh, already, ONL did that, two big solar systems that we have. So we are able to use that to close 20% of the electricity that we need. Okay, and that is fully green. Now we also know the electricity that we get from the grid is 40% green. Okay, we, so in a sense we're making even there good progress, but it's still a way to go to get that completely green. Uh, and, and again, we have some good thoughts how we, how we can get to those numbers. The third one is waste, because, you know, any production facility has waste. Uh, the good thing is that we are almost, if I'm correct, over 90% landfill free of the waste that we have. We reuse it, we resell it, uh, we repurpose it. There's still a few percent that we need to close. Again, we know where the elements are and how we want to get that happen because by 2030 we want to make sure there is no waste to landfill and there is a net zero emission on carbon. The third one, what was also a big conversation uh, uh, with, with the president, is water. Uh, water is a core ingredient of, of our business. Um, so we are absolutely kind of worried about the scarcity of water in Namibia. And it's not just in Namibia, it's a global thing. Countries are getting too much. 
or they're getting too little. The positive thing for us, but that's just for our business, is we have five boreholes. And, and these five boreholes can deliver 100% of the water to produce what we need to produce. We got an extension last week from the city of Vintuk uh, on our permit to use the full 100%, what is fantastic, uh, because we are one of the biggest users of water in the city of Vintuk. So it's great that we got the permission. And the water is coming from the north aquifer. So it's not the south one, it's the north one. That water you cannot drink, it's not palatable. Okay. So we use a, a, a reverse osmosis uh, process to clean it. What is a big investment that you need to have the right people kind of to understand. So it doesn't impact the water that the city of Vintuk uh, is using because these are two separate uh, aquifers. I do although believe that any business needs to play a positive role to, you know, find solutions for the future. Because I was about to ask that. Because we have to. We are currently going through a water scarcity. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. so what will MBL be doing yes. in order to actually aid the no, so we want to do three things. Uh, one is we need to start working together. So what we are having next week with NAM Water, uh, with uh, uh, City of Vintuk, and with uh, some of the businesses, a meeting together to say where are we? What are we doing from a business perspective? Are there short, medium, and long-term solutions that we can support? And what the support is going to look like, we need to discuss. Uh, because we, we, we cannot be blind for what's happening around us. We can say we have the boreholes, so we are all good. No, no, no. I mean, we need to look for the future. Uh, for that, we also want to use some of the knowledge and experience that we have from our biggest shareholder, Heineken, because they have globally similar challenges. So we want to use the expertise that they have to help us. The second one is we need to reduce the amount of water that we are using. Right? And, and that's what we are working on already, because the less we use, the better. The third one, and that's quite a big project that we already kicked off with NAM Water, is how do we balance the water that we use to produce beer somewhere else? Okay, so what does it mean is if we use X, find a way where we are losing X amount of water and put the right program in, in place to capture that back into the normal uh, infrastructure. Which becomes portable. Uh, exactly. So there are different ways to do that. And, 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 and in the world uh, around us, you see different, different uh, uh, solutions for that. But we need to kind of explore. I think the great thing is what, we, what, what the conversation will be with NAM Water is to start understanding what are the short, medium and long term solutions. And is there one or two that we can actively get engaged in to do that water balancing? Because uh, uh, yes, we cannot be blind for what's happening around us. But that's why also carbon emission reduction is going to be core because that's impacting the climate and that's impacting the water. So it's not just kind of solving the water issue, but also solving your carbon emission. And that is our big driver as well, because, you know, that is one of the causes that we need to change around and not just us everybody around us because there's, there's a great uh, drive in terms of carbon emissions and credits yes. as well yes um let's look at the corporate responsibility yes. of um, nbl yes firstly um you had mentioned the various drinks that you're that yes. you're promoting yes. um how is nbl yes. promoting responsible yes. drinking yes because it is an issue that we are facing oh, yeah, yeah. no. and i think because when you ask me from a sustainability point of view, one pillar is environmental, the other one for us is responsible consumption. Mm -hmm. It, it starts with ourselves, you know, so even internally we started quite a big program around responsible consumption and what does moderate consumption really mean? Because we need to be the ambassadors. If we're not the ambassadors of responsible consumption, yeah, who else will lead it? Uh, and that's really what we're driving through the organization to, yeah, to, to, to bring that to life. Um, and there is one yeah, interesting um, topic in that sense that we as a company believe you should never drive when you drink. And we know there's a different regulation in Namibia. I think it is interesting to start exploring that because uh, South Africa changed uh, a few years ago. And you can, sh you can see that that has changed the way people you know, drink. Because for me, at the end of the day, you want to have everybody home, safe, sound. 
uh, uh, so yes, we, we are playing an active role there. We're playing an active role internally. And we should put some of these conversations back on the table. Yeah? Is, are we good that people can drink and drive at a certain alcohol promille? Because the reality is if you drink alcohol, it impacts your driving skills. So should we not go for a zero tolerance? Conversation to have. Another issue that we are faced with mm -hmm. is high unemployment rates. Yes. What is MBL? You have explained it. Yes. Right? Let's look at the numbers of people that you have employed, for example, yes. and maybe future people that you are yes. planning on employing yes. because of the growth that you are yes. planning on. Unemployment is, is high, and what really worries me is, is the unemployment between kind of 18 to 25 people that also have kind of studied, and that's even more than 50%. Yes. Okay. As a company, we cannot, on our own, close that gap. Uh, I, I, I want to be clear. So I think what is important as a business is to deliver, you know, and that's what I'm saying, we're really vested in the economy on all the money that we pay to the government to also enable the government, uh, what they're already doing, to kind of close the gap and make sure people can uh, study. Uh, um, from, from a growth perspective, yes, I, you know, I truly believe if a company stops growing, you have a problem. Now, if you grow, you need more people. Uh, and, and even currently, if you would go around our premises, because we are investing heavily in preparation of production and packaging of cider and wine at MBL, we have more than 200 contractors working here. They are working here because we are investing. So in that sense, there is, there is quite a amount of additional people working here that are maybe not employed, but they're employed here because we are investing in, in the business. On the other hand, and there's a bit, I mean, you can do the calculation. Normally what we say, if you have X amount of people, you have three times that amount of suppliers. Uh, so it's not only 1,000 people that are working for us, there are probably 3,000 people around that are working through suppliers that we are buying from. Uh, and, 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 and we're buying quite a big amount. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's almost 700 million that we buy from local suppliers. So in that sense, we also make sure that people have a job. Uh, um, so the growth will enable the growth also of people. The money that we make and we pay on corporate tax, on VAT, on excise, what is more than 1.5 billion a year, goes to the government. And I'm sure the government will invest in the right areas to ensure that people are able to find a job. Just to pick it back yes. on to where you mentioned the tax contribution, yes. which you also won an award for. Yes, yes. What does it mean for MBL? Um, no, I mean, it's, it's always great to, you know, to, 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 to get an award. I mean, let, let's, be, let's be fair and honest. For me, what is much more important is not just because we were the highest contributor in VAT and excise. What is more important to me is that we are recognized as a company that applies to the rules uh, and we are completely compliant. Uh, we not, you know, because of that and because of the business we have, we are the highest VAT and excise payer, what is fantastic. But it just shows again that we are vested in Namibia and that, you know, if we do well, and, and consumers are supporting our brands, the money will go where it needs to go, back to the Namibian government. Let's look at the report that you had recently revealed. Yes. Um, where we saw some consumers consuming a certain beverage more. Yes. And another consumer basically yes. a beverage less. Yes. What does this speak to NBL's um, strategy of growth? Yes. And also at the same time ensuring that your products are actually getting out there and being consumed yes. instead of just producing, producing yes. without a consumer. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a fair point. I think last year has was, was a challenging year. And, and why challenging? I think for three reasons. One is at the moment that you integrate businesses, it always creates anxiety. It creates a bit of fear. Uh, and with that, as a management team, you very much focus on the integration and far less focus on the external world. And that's where the consumer is that needs to buy our product, right? So that's one point. Secondly, the social economics were not great. Uh, and what we could see specifically in our mainstream portfolio that we offer, that with the inflation uh, higher than GDP, there was less money to spend. And people had to make the right choice around 
what money do I need for my household or for other services? And to be honest, that's the call they should make. Make sure you can, you know, do the Take right things for your family. And then, you know, then the rest will come. And I, 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 you know, I truly mean that. The third thing is, yes, at, at the moment of integration, any competitor will know and they will play it. And they, they will use that opportunity. And, that, and that's kind of what happens. Uh, uh, um, the good thing is, although we see a, you know, we had a really good start of the year. Uh, so we see some real positive trends. And so I'm very happy, very happy about that. Uh, uh, but yes, that is kind of why we had a more challenging six months. The positive, although, was that we managed our cash extremely well. What I'm picking up is that MBL is a people-centered, um, or mm -hmm. they have a people-centered mm -hmm. analogy going mm -hmm. on. Finally, what is your future vision mm -hmm. for MBL? Mm -hmm. Not only just for the growth of it, mm -hmm. for the people that are working for mm -hmm. MBL and the ones that are externally working for MBL, mm -hmm. but also for the investments that you have mm -hmm. planning on, yes. um, your corporate responsibilities yes. that you've got going yes. on, or yes. the ones that you feel that you want to embark on. Yes. What yes. is the future for MBL? I think, yeah, the future for me is still almost going back to my dream, you know, to delight every adult consumer with the best alcohol beverage in the most sustainable way. That's still my dream. We, we, we're not there yet. I think it's, 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 it's a kind of part that you want to go on. You know, for me, success would be if we can continue to grow the business, uh, but even more that we really make a difference from a sustainability point of view. On the, on the environment, socially, from a responsible consumption point of view, and from an economic impact point of view. Because I believe that is where we can make the biggest difference, uh, because that will flow back to Namibia. And, and really being recognized. For me, you know, success will be that, and, and, and I don't know if, if, if in Namibia we have these kind of awards, but in some other countries you have these awards around being the most sustainable business. I know they started up in, in, in Namibia. That would be success for me, that we are recognized as the most sustainable business in Namibia. That would be success. On the other hand, from a people perspective, you know, that we really become, you know, the best place to work. Because uh, uh, if you are the best place to work, you are recognized as the most sustainable business. Yeah, that will bring, you know, the right position uh, for MBL and, and its stakeholders to grow uh, and continue to grow. Uh, uh, that, that would kind of success look like for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. That was the NBL's MD Peter Simons in conversation with producer Almarie Kapunda. When we come back, it's time for entertainment.